that's okay. You can keep going because it's about progress and yeah. not perfection. Yeah. It just opens up a door. And so I mentioned this in podca- past podcast, but the one thing that my kids say a lot, and I read this from a book and introduced it um, to my kids is... Sometimes Ooh, life like it. goes easy. Sometimes life uh-huh. goes easy. <laughs> Okay, everybody. Do, 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 do. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, that was Grace. good. Grace. Grace that was a, that. What were you going to say? <laughs> no, it was just awesome. I thought it was the Is this going to turn into soundtrack. a musical podcast now? I uh, thought it was a Grace. soundtrack, but it was a her. Soundtrack harmonizing. recording. <laughs> Did you notice Grace had a little bit of like harmony in there? I don't know what was going on. <laughs> wow. Grace, do you si- Grace, do you sing? I mean, I think everyone sings. Well, yes. Right? But I think there you, are more questions you, you after know, that uh, that may well, or may not be a good answer. <laughs> are you do you have a good voice? I, I think I'm a basic singer. It's okay. not like great, but I can sing in tune if it's in your to range. a song. Yeah. yeah. Like because I did instruments growing up okay. so well, i, I can hear bit. what's in tune <laughs> but right wow the quality of the voices what, what instrument other did you play <clears throat> oh <laughs> that was a rural special played, clearing of her throat <laughs> i played clarinet i feel you like did? we talked about in this elementary before. school yeah. but i don't remember and this. i also played yeah. The snare drum. Oh wow! In elementary school, but then when it advanced to the point to where it was like, "Hey, you probably need to get your parents to buy you like a set of drums." Like, hey, <laughs> That's when it ended. That ain't gonna happen. My parents got this snare drum at a thrift store. Oh like, yeah, they're not, not gonna buy me a. <laughs> Is the snare the really big one? No, the snare is just the little small one, right? The one that's right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it it creates the like the the vibe. It's kind of annoying. If it was in front of you right now, yeah, could you be able to to do some? No. No. Okay. It was a long time ago. But and I'm you know what I need to take that back. I'm blaming my parents because that is true. They would have never been able to afford to buy me a full full set. But the reality is, there is no way on earth. I can do one beat with my hands and a faster. A different one slow, with your feet. Yeah, I can. Uh-huh. I can not. And then like do crossing it. over yeah. and do throwing the stick yeah. in the air oh, yeah. and now catching you're... it and <laughs> Grace banging like, your head Grace at the same time. Like, you listen to Def Leppard or something. <laughs> Grace listens to eighties <laughs> rock. Def Leppard has the one arm drummer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. He lost his so, other arm in a car. So it's oh a little bit. It's, it's a little That's bit impressive. easier. It's a little bit easier for him to keep his arm and his feet in Instinct. unison yeah <laughs> oh, yeah that's terrible it might be kind of hard but yeah yeah he did he lost way to overcome that's he, impressive if i remember correctly it was his friend who crashed the car oh, mm-hmm. so the accident. and it resulted in him losing his arm oh my goodness and but he Def kept it Leopard, up yeah to their credit waited for him to recover yep and learn to drum with oh. one arm I mean, really? they, they had to have they had to have yeah, replacements like, in the meantime. Right. But his like, they hey, took him you, back. you're part of our band. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. That's great. Yeah, that's really cool. So yeah. you can I, also pick it back up if you want, Kurt. I can. It's <laughs> never could. too late. <laughs> it's never it's too late. Never too no late. challenge too big. All right. Well, everybody, welcome back to week two, uh, two episode two mm-hmm. of our series that we're calling something <laughs> two it's gonna, it's gonna have a two in it we're it's two, gonna have we're two phrases to. but we're two, two weeks things. in and we still haven't picked the top the i don't know this is weird <laughs> no okay well. <laughs> anyway <laughs> people will be able to read it top two important things things okay on various different topics so last week last episode you know we used to when we first started we, we, you told us chris don't say last week because what if we miss a week what if we oh, don't right. And we've or never, what is we've the never, posted at a different time? Yeah, we've yeah. never missed a week. They're always posted on yeah. Wednesday mornings. So really, we can say last week, but we want to say last episode because people don't always listen in order. True. So true. Yes. So last episode, last episode was the kickoff. Was the kickoff? We did the top two things that every child needs mm-hmm. to hear over and over from their parents. Mm-hmm. It was very fun. If you didn't listen to that, please go back and do so. This week we are going to kind of flip it. And say, what are the top two things every parent needs to hear mm-hmm. over and over again? Mm-hmm. Not from your kids, but what are the top <laughs> two things that you need to maybe just remind yourself? Yes. yes. Um, remind each other if you're married. Um, just what are the top two things that p- every parent needs to be reminded of? Every parent needs to hear over and over 
and over mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. And you went first last week, Grace. I'll go first this week. How Sounds say? great. Okay. Yes. Can't wait to hear. What I what I would say is, man, this is a tough assignment. In mm-hmm. some ways, it would have been easier, Producer Chris, because this whole thing was your idea. It would have been easier for you if you said, hey, each of you comes with three. Right. Because like- There's l- so many. So many. Yeah. W- w- How do you just pick one? Yeah. Winnowing it down, whittling it down. What do you do? Whittle? Mm-hmm. Whittle? Like like with a piece of wood? Whittle, yes. Whitt- whittling it down? Whittling, yeah. Whittling. Yeah. Whittling. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> Whittling oh. it down to one. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Was, was whittling it. Whittling. Whitt- yeah. Winnow. I think, you can, I, th- I think you can also look this up, Chris. See if I'm right. Yes. Winnowing it. Winnowing. I think if you winnow something down, it's also. I think it's like truncating it, like, culling it, or culling it, truncating it. Wow. wow. No, but that's not the right word. <laughs> I think right in word. this case. To winnow down. Oh, to winnow down is to have a a small, stinky. What? Little ball full of a bunch of other metallic balls, oh, and you're pulling them off Boo. one at a time. Boo. And you're pulling them off one Boo. at a time. Now everybody no. has to go back now, to yes, last if episode. We're not even going to go. Confused about yeah. that? Just listen what, to last week's episode. What does it mean to winnow down? <laughs> Am I way off? Uh, it it's it says to blow a c- current of air through grain in order to remove the chaff. Oh, I think it's like a harvesty thing. So you're, so you're wh- like, you're cleaning. Yeah. It can work so because you're, you're getting rid of the fluff. Thank you. So that thank the you. singular important you're, thing remains. You're Winnow separating the, to, the, the chaff from the grain. Yeah. Right. By Ooh. fanning. Okay. So you're by getting fanning. rid of the... Yes. Extracurricular. So to winnow it down. To the main core subject. How do you subject. even know that word? Good job, Kurt. Guys. <laughs> Like, did you grow up on a farm? Listen, like, listen, guys. You did grow up on a farm, no, didn't you? No, I didn't. Did you? No. No, okay. No, I've never even visited a farm. That would have been cool. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Farmer Kurt. I don't even know I, I've never even really seen a farm. <laughs> I, went to, I went to Farmer's Boys for a hamburger a couple of weeks ago. That's as close as I get. Far, so, far, so, Farmer Brothers? Farmer Boys. Yeah. Anyway. So why, why are you saying winnow? Because your point was... Whittle, winnowing or whittling how is about, harder. How about just narrowing it? Narrowing it, yeah. Just, just, just <laughs> yeah. narrowing it down to one mm-hmm. is really, really hard. Didn't you meet Rachel on FarmersOnly.com? Oh, gosh. <laughs> that dating site. <laughs> Producer Chris. First of all, no. I have to Now, now you have to clarify have to answer, for the record. I have to answer the question. Otherwise, but if you did, there think, would have been nothing wrong with that. No. I that would have been farmers. cool. <laughs> there is. No, there's like a f- OnlyFarmers.com is like a... Oh, is that a real thing for farmers? No, like yeah. no it is it yeah. really? Twenty years no. ago, yeah. I don't think it's that's still pretty around. cool. I don't know. Producer <laughs> 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 Chris, yes. Here, let me. What, no, what, what's going to happen? Get mute yourself. Kind of. Are you muting yourself? Uh, Why don't you do that? Like Why don't you mute yourself? <laughs> no. He's cheering Wrong himself. Button. He's cheering Wrong himself button. on. No. Find no. find the mute button for your microphone channel. <laughs> And hit that. All right, here it is. <laughs> okay, here we go. But even though, I haven't pushed yeah. those buttons in a long time. I know, uh, right? Yeah. It's so much fun. How about we don't? <laughs> let's let's keep. There's moving. a reason. For let's that. keep moving. So, narrowing it down to one stuff. Yes. Um, but the one I landed on that I think every parent needs to hear. I need. I I need to hear it. Okay. Um, and it was a reminder. It was a reminder because you go through seasons where you just don't feel this to be true mm. um, or you give up because, well, it's not me anymore. You kind mm. of just assume it's not true. Okay. Um, and I think that it is a hundred percent true all the time. And that is parents you need here over and over and over and over and over again is that you are, mm-hmm. and you actually always will be the most important influence in your child's oh, life. That's good. Mm. Yes. You are, and you always will be the most important influence mm. in your child's life. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't like hand that authority. Mm. Don't hand that influence over to anybody else. And it's important. I think a lot of parents, and I'm going to lean into the, this, this next season with, with most of my thoughts, a lot of parents just kind of assume and get, Oh yeah, of course, why kids young, of course, on their number one right, influence. Right. They're with me a ton. Mm-hmm. They're not at school yet. We don't, they don't have much freedom. Mm-hmm. We're teaching them all the things about life, of course, of course. And then what happens is parents begin to see their children maybe in early adolescence and then I'd say all through junior high and high school. 
where friendships become way mm-hmm. more important. Mm-hmm. They quit paying attention to mom and dad. They roll their eyes at our advice. And so what we do is we think, well, we're not, we're not their number one influence anymore. Mm. We're, we're, we're not. And what I, what I would, a couple things to maybe think about that differently, parents, is how you choose to and lean into your influential years early on, mm-hmm. that will help that influence carry over into their teenage mm-hmm. years, right? Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is that kids want mom and dad. Mm-hmm. I've been a youth pastor from, for decades, and teenagers want mom and dad to be engaged. Mm. They want mom and dad's influence. It's a source of security. Mm. It's a reminder that they're loved, that they're valued. Going back to your number one, what what do kids need to hear? Last week, yeah. Is that you are valued, worthy, and loved no matter matter what, what. Mm -hmm. right? And so when mom and dad are still engaged and helping their teenagers navigate life, it's reinforcing, wow, mom and dad, I'm still worthy Mm. of their attention. I'm worthy of their concern. They love me enough to talk Mm. to me about this. Um, So... As your kids grow, Mm -hmm. how you influence and kind of what it looks like does change, but but you are the most important and the biggest influence in their lives. And by the way, when they're older, you may not be actively influencing them anymore, but when you talk to counseling, they talk to things about childhood trauma, your family of origin, all the stuff that counselors mm. work with their adult clients about, mm-hmm. how much of that points back to childhood stuff. Mm-hmm. So your influence carries into their adult years mm. for good and for bad. Right. Um, and you might go, I have, I, you know, my, my adult child lives across the country. We see each other three times a year. We talk on the phone once a week. How much influence do I have? Maybe not in the day to day, but your influence in their life, in their worldview, in how they're raising their own kids is enormous. Mm. Um, so parents don't, don't give that authority away. Mm. Don't, don't just assume that your kids don't want your involvement in their life. Um, your children are your precious mm. gift. You, they're your biggest role that the, that the Lord has given you. Mm. And so lean into that influence, lean into it with confidence, with a sense of responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, it's a balancing act. You don't right. want to be a helicopter parent. Right. Mm-hmm. right. You know, you got to know that's why if you've not listened to the podcast several episodes ago, a couple months ago, where mm-hmm. we really looked at our on purpose parent strategy and the different roles we mm-hmm. play, mm-hmm. right. Those are different levels of influence and, right. and in a real way, those are kind of different levels of influence. And so you have to be wise about what does my influence look like? in this season, because if I'm still trying to influence my 18 year old, the way I influence my seven year old, mm-hmm. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> right. I'm doing it yeah, wrong, yeah, yeah. but I'm still the number one influence in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, Wayne Rice, he's the co-founder of this massive youth ministry organization. I don't think he can quantify this, but he has said over and over again that teenagers will gravitate towards the oldest person in the room who takes them seriously. Mm. Hmm. They'll gravitate towards the oldest person in the room who takes them seriously. Interesting. And what I love about that is it's just a good reminder to parents that when your teenagers treat you like you're just some out of touch old person, Mm -hmm. well, take them seriously, stay involved, ask good questions. Right. And they, they want you, they want your presence in their life. Right. So that's 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 my number one. That's great. that's great. And I and I love the encouragement that you are giving us as parents not to to have your own basically to have your own convictions of the importance of being a parent and not letting that just be influenced by other people's reactions, right. your even your own kids reactions yeah. to you that this is such a important and precious gift yep. and responsibility that we've been given. Lean into right. it and don't give it up. That's well, really and, great. And one of the biggest mistakes I've seen parents make, and it's usually in junior high and high school, and that's when mm-hmm. their child starts to like outwardly um, rebuff yes. their influence. Parents, they don't want to. They don't want to overstep. They don't want to have the conflict, or they're hurt, or they're hurt. And so, what parents do is at the exact same age when they should be leaning in. Mm-hmm. 
they they back out. Or like fine. Right? And then that creates what I would just call this like this influence vacuum. Or this uh, in, I'm sorry, this influence void. Mm-hmm. And if there's an influence void, somebody's going to fill it. Mm-hmm. So that's when friends become, friends could become the number the one. The biggest influence. They could become, yeah. social media could become. Mm-hmm. But really that, that really only happens if mom and dad. Back um, out. If they back out, if mm-hmm. they advocate the throne. Yeah. Right? Um, so parents, when you feel like backing off, I would suggest that's probably when in a healthy way, right. you need to actually lean into your role. Right, and leaning into influence, which is not exactly the same as controlling. Correct. Controlling. Yeah. Love that. Okay, my one thing, that phrase that parents need to hear over and over again, and this is something that has been helpful for me and something I continually need to hear and remind myself is to focus on progress mm. and not perfection. One of the things I've observed about myself, my husband, and even my friends is that when we get frustrated with our kids, it's about a result that we want Mm. that's not being achieved. Mm. Or if we're frustrated with ourselves, it's because we have some standard of parenting that we feel like we're missing. Yep. And, and we're just constantly in this cycle of like, I should be this and I'm missing the mark and I beat myself up or I get angry or I get depressed or whatever your reaction to failure might be. Yeah. And you see that in your kids, your kids confront something that they're not hitting the mark the way you think they should. They're not acting the way kids should be acting at that age. They're not performing like your friends, kids are performing. They're not behaving like your friends, kids are behaving or how society says, whatever the standard of kids should be acting at this stage And it's very easy for us to, as parents, just feel this constant pressure and anxiety of missing the mark. And and I think that stems from just our entire society is so focused on achievement because Mm -hmm. that is what gets validated. So it's not almost, you know, it's understandable that that's how we might be. Maybe that's how we were raised, but also society, they, you know, if you get a plus you get more attention if you behave a certain way that's more culturally uh, acceptable or desirable in terms of personality you get more attention and so we're always striving towards this perfection and mark that when we feel like our kids or ourselves are not miss uh, hitting that mark we just get so frustrated Mm -hmm. and and i think that is the stem the source of a lot of frustration that we don't need to have yeah because in reality, we shouldn't like, and this is something I tell my kids all the time too, when they're trying something new, when you learn how to ride a bike, it totally makes sense that you will be terrible at it at first. Like there is no need to feel so terrible about your self-worth, your value, your thoughts right. on that. I'll never learn to ride a bike. There's all these thoughts that you have when you fail Every, at something. Everybody was terrible. Everybody was started. terrible. Yeah. And and it's one of those things that like once you get it and you get into that mindset, it makes so much sense. But until that becomes a habit, until you start seeing failure, not as failure, but as progress or steps mm-hmm. that you need to get to the next level and that life is all about continuing to progress from one level to the other and that that progress is a journey. Once you get that concept and that mindset, so many things become just like a breath of like refreshing air right. that you're not striving all the time. But if you're not yet in that mindset and you're still in this shame-based, performance-based, mm-hmm. ah, I didn't perform right. the best, it can feel so hard to to have that mindset, even though it may seem obvious or like, sure, you know, um, when you're in that moment, when you're trying to ride the bike for the first time and it's not working or even a week or two in and it's not working, you can't, it just feels bad. Yeah. And so the encouragement or the reminder that I would um, share with parents is remind yourself that as you are parenting, you're, the way that you view yourself and the way that you view your kids, focus on progress. Mm-hmm. So if there is something that is not ideal, like, and there's something that, let's say you are feeling like you're not as patient of a parent as you want to be, or your child has a certain behavioral uh, 
habit that you think is not as healthy and you're working on it instead of just harping on I'm not there and then just just Mm. butting heads with yourself or with your spouse or with your kids just try to twist your mindset or change your mindset to say am I making some progress am I taking one step closer are we learning okay like we know what we're trying to go for here but and I and I was patient for Two times instead of, you know, two times this week out of the 10 instead of zero times out of the 10. That's great. Like you're learning, you're building skills, you're building habits and you're working towards it. And and I think that if as parents, we could remind ourselves of that and give ourselves that grace. It is such and you talked about influence. Right. I think that is an incredible influence you can give to your kids. Yeah. Because if you are so hard on yourself every time you fail at something that may be parenting related, let's say, you know, there's you do something that you're like, oh, parent will fail and you beat yourself over it. Your kids see that. Yeah. And so the message that they get in your daily living is, oh, if I don't hit the mark, I should beat myself up right. or I should be ashamed or right. I should try to hide it or I should, um, you know, kind of uh, shy away from drawing light to it. But, and we've talked about this in past podcasts, when you have a growth mindset, it is so liberating because failures are opportunities to right. learn. And when you can show your kids, oh man, I really messed up there. Okay, this is what I'm going to learn. I This is great. I'll get a chance to try it again next time. I'm going to try something difficult. Like when they see that, you're giving them such tools to to be more successful in the different things that they're going to pursue in life yep. because almost certainly whatever they pursue, they're going to come up against failure yeah. and imperfection. Right. And if you ha- can show them in your own life and how you treat yourself that that's okay. You can keep going because it's about progress and yep. not perfection. Yep. It just opens up a door. And so I mentioned this in past podcasts, but the one thing that my kids say a lot, and I read this from a book and introduced it um, to my kids is we say the phrase, not yet a lot. And I know I mentioned that and that's been super helpful. My kid and Zoe always says that back like, oh man, like didn't, didn't do so well there. You know, I'm not very good at this. Sometimes I'll say something like that. Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not good at that. And then Zoe will be like, not yet. Because the idea is <laughs> you're not a fixed person. You're right. not static. And right. a fixed mindset where you're focused on failure will be like, I either have it or I don't. Right. But a growth mindset says, okay, I don't have it now, but I can change. I can grow. I can develop. Yep. And that gives you a sense of hope. It doesn't put you in a box. I, I, yeah, I was pretty bad at this. I'm not very good at it. Not yet, right? but I can grow. And that's how you can view yourself as a parent too. There may be many things you feel you're not great at, but rather than focusing on that standard of perfection, if you focus on progress, that you're just not there yet, but you're on your way, that I think will just help relieve a lot of stress for parents going through all the different stages that you'll go through in parenting. That's so good. I kept mm-hmm. thinking, ooh, I have something to add. Oh, hey, and then you got you, I kept going <laughs> No, 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 Do you no, remember? no, no, no. I mean, you would, you would, you would hit on what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. So all right. I, I was just, I was maybe just you were listening. like sending was, me those vibes. It was fantastic. Well, there you have it. Our top two tough to whittle, whittle, whittle. Winnow, <laughs> truncate. <laughs> Tough narrow. to narrow it all down <laughs> to just two, mm-hmm. but those those are two. Um, parents, you are and always will be the most important, the most influential person in your child's life, and focus on progress, not perfection. Mm-hmm. We hope you hear that. We hope you remind yourself, remind your friends who are also on the parenting journey. Would you please like answer the question that we post in the comments if you're watching on YouTube Mm -hmm. share this video share this podcast text parents 83000 you can go to onpurposeparents.com to see all of our other resources our little podcast just kind of keeps growing Um, if you know other parents who might benefit from a light hearted fun look at parenting that hopefully helps you on your journey please pass this podcast along we'll see you next time around bye everybody won't you take me piggyback won't you give piggyback won't you take me piggyback won't you be